Hello and welcome to Close Calls on the 42.e, brought to you in association with Air Sport. You know the scale at this stage. Every Friday we look ahead to the biggest sporting event of the weekend and we dial up the hottest pundits in the game to help us to do so. This weekend it is all about the Champions Cup once more. My name is Gavin Casey and I'm joined in 42 Towers by Ryan Bailey. How are you, Ryan? Gav, good, good, yeah. Recovering from last night? No, I know, but say nothing okay. about last night. We are a little bit uh, worse for wear after the 42 Christmas party or the journal media Christmas party. But we're going to persevere. We have uh, a man to help him do that. It is Johnny Murphy, the perfect man to talk to us about Monster and Leicester, or Leicester in particular, and uh, the rest of the fixtures as well. Johnny, how are things? Good, all, all good, thank you. You're a little bit uh, sleep deprived yourself, Johnny, which made us feel a little bit better about ourselves. <laughs> yeah, a small bit, my wife. Um, I uh, had twins uh, about 12 days ago, so little boy, uh, George, and little girl, Molly, so they're all home now, so uh, all going well, but yeah, the, as I was saying to you offline, it's uh, our 18-month-old AJ that's causing all the trouble, but yeah, look, we'll get we'll get sleep in a few years, it'll be fine. Excellent, and uh, congratulations to you again, Johnny, I don't know if you're going to see the rugby over the weekend, but uh, we might kick off with <laughs> Leicester and Munster, uh, it probably is the biggest be- uh, game of the weekend, given that... There's a lot on the line for both teams. Um, a lot of talk during the week as well from Matt O'Connor, who's kind of made Andrew Andrew Conway out to be a bit of a I don't know. It, it's drumming up controversy where I don't really know if there is any. And it's like maybe taken away from the fact that his team were uh, definitely second best last weekend. What are your thoughts ahead of uh, ahead of Welford Road this weekend? Um, well, like you know, Maddie is Maddie. I played under him for two or three years over in Leicester. Um, you know he's not shy of giving him his opinion on on anything. Um, that's the way he is inside rugby. It's the way he is outside rugby. He's a pretty pretty straight uh, straight shooter. So, you know if he if he feels a bit aggrieved by something, he's going to say it. And I think that's probably what led to his um, probably downfall in Ireland um, and the fact that he probably took on Joe and you know David is for in terms of the availability of the internationals. And probably that was what was probably his undoing at the end. Um, you know, I think there probably is a small bit of, uh, of what he's saying in terms of uh, possibly refereeing decisions. Um, you know, Munster were, were smart, uh, whether they were cynical or not, I'm not sure. Uh, because, you know, Leicester themselves can probably err on that uh, that side too in terms of if they played the referee correct, correctly. So... Um, yeah, I, I think the Andrew Conway stuff. I think he's just probably annoyed that you know he's going to be missing uh, Vianu for a, kind of a period of time. But you know that was a collision. Um, yes, technically um, it was to Vianu's uh, head, but you know Andrew gets knocked out because he hits him with his head. So it's a it's a head clash. It's a it's a mistake. It's you know, it's kind of one of these things that just happens in rugby. There's no malice. There's no intent. Um, so I think that side is probably yeah. He's just drumming up stuff to probably try and get a reaction from his players uh, because you know, speaking to a couple of guys in the backroom staff, they felt their boys were soft. So you know, they're certainly going to be calling them out individually and collectively behind closed doors. And this is probably a way of trying to say you know publicly, look lads. You know, you you didn't do your job, and um, I think that's probably what he's trying to do there. Big time from the monster perspective, Johnny. I mean, we obviously the two teams have played each other an awful lot over the last few years, and throughout the history of this competition or all variable uh, variants of the competition, like. If you go back to last year, Munster dominated Leicester at home as well, and when they went across to England, they they were beaten up really physically as much as anything, and it, like it was a close game. Munster were maybe a little bit unlucky with the penalty at the end, but how do they ensure that that doesn't happen this time round? And also, I suppose Leicester are playing for something this time, which is their future in the competition this year. So presumably, it is going to be a close game. But how do Munster sort of rediscover their dominance from last weekend? Um, I think they just have to go about their game the exact same way. Um, they have to err on that side in terms of, you know, the legal line at the breakdown, and they have to try and dominate that area. Um, you know, I think it's a case that if they can meet, you know, if they can get priority in that area, you know, priority in that area, I think they're probably in for in for a good day. Um, you know, Welford Road has the history that that um, you know that Tom Park does, so the crowd are going to be. Probably on their backs, and that and that sort of might not be as an as an easy ride in terms of 
um, that Munster had uh, this week. But um, I think they need to get that physical, and they need to do what they've always done, and that to win the air. You know, they get you know Murray putting up the box kicks, getting up in the air, uh, controlling the air, and getting that momentum because that can suck the life out of teams, suck the energy out of you. Saw what happened extra last week. You know, when Jack Noel came on and he dropped two or three balls and all the energy just goes from a team. So they have to get their basics in terms of what their pillars are as a team and what their coaching staff want. That's defensively, break down, win the air. If they can do that, then they can really, really push forward uh, this weekend. Absolutely. Ryan, a couple of changes to the Munster team? Yeah, cool. obviously in fours, Conway, Conway's gone. So handy enough to bring Darren Sweet in. Obviously, he had a great November. He's been in great form. Uh, but I think uh, the huge loss is Reese Marshall at Hooker. I mean, he had an outstanding game last week. He was he was everywhere. He's so energetic, tireless, um, so dynamic. He comes from. Kind of reminds me a bit of Sean Cronin as well. He gets around the pitch very easily. A great athlete. Um, so he's obviously a huge loss. And Kevin O'Byrne coming in for his first European start, like that's a huge occasion for him. Um, but as Johnny was saying there, I think Munster need to replicate what they did last week. I think obviously Andy Farrell worked wonders with them over the last fortnight. Um, he's been down in Limerick a couple of days working on the defence. Um, they've kind of ins- insisted that he hasn't changed much. The mm. structure and their offence has been the same. But last week they just got the spot on. They were so aggressive with the line speed. Scannell and Arnold in midfield set that down early on. They made a few big hits, denied Ford and um, Ben Young's time and space. And that just led to Leicester's inaccuracies, really. Like Matt O'Connor used the excuse that um, of the breakdown, but it just Munster were so quick up on them. They, didn't let them settle and that kind of led to, to Leicester's inaccuracy. So, yeah, same again from Munster, but as, as we've been saying, it's pretty difficult to replicate that again. Absolutely, particularly over in England. Uh, now, obviously, there is a repeat of the other two fixtures as well for the Irish provinces, and uh, they got on well last weekend, and you'd expect, I think, OK, Exeter are an excellent team, you'd expect Leinster to repeat their feet at home. You probably would expect also to get the job done against the Harlequins team that have nothing to play for in the competition. Uh, Johnny, we might start with... Lancer, how impressed were you by that? <coughs> excuse me, by that victory last weekend against an, an absolutely superb outfit. It, it, like, if it was an acid test, Leinster passed it, and they looked like serious contenders now for this competition. Yeah, they were very clinical, um, and they, you know, uh, I'd still be in contact with a lot of guys uh, that I played with over there, and they were really looking forward to Exeter kind of showing you, uh, showing Europe what standard that they were the standard bearers for. You know, for English rugby, and I, I think it's it's something that that's um, that probably the whole Premiership has probably took a bit of a hit for. You know, they're unsure, uh, you know, what the quality is is like after that because they're kind of stunned a small bit, um, and that's just down to how Leinster played. They brought an intensity, and they brought a, they just look so comfortable in what they did, um, back to when. You know, Joe Smith was in charge. You knew what you were going to get uh, with them, but they all just looked so comfortable on the ball and um, they were just clinical. And they did what Exeter have done to teams over the last 18 months in the Premiership, hold the ball for long, long periods of time. And when they got into 22, they scored. Um, Exeter are going to be hurting, though, this weekend. So I'm not sure how, you know, if they're if they underestimate them at all I think there's going to be a big backlash there I do expect Leicester to get a job done but I think weirdly it might be a small bit closer you know Exeter just they were completely flustered it was like you know as I said already Noel came off the bench as a British line he dropped two or three balls in the air when there was no one around him you know and it's you know those basic things that you would be guaranteed that Exeter would do every week, week in week out in the Premiership that they just they just lacked last week and I think they're going to be hurting and they they owe themselves a performance. I don't think the result is probably uh, going to go their way, but I think it's going to be a cracker of a game. Uh, you know, Noel starts, Lockie Turner comes in at 15, you know, he's a class outfit. Um, and I think, you know, it's going to be a bit tighter, but I do expect Leinster to get the job done in the end. Yeah, Ryan, I mean, Again, it was a hugely impressive performance by Leinster last weekend. I dare say, like, if that fixture had taken place last year, Leinster might have been on the wrong side of things in terms sure, of the results. Yeah. What have you been impressed by this year in terms of where they've moved their game on? Sure, I think like, Stuart Lancaster always speaks incredibly well, but I think 
his point on Monday was that the most pleasing aspect of it, he was hurt, he was frustrated by the try they conceded, number one. Mm. Out of all the positive, positives from that game, the first thing he said was that try. He was so frustrated by it, even 24 hours after the game. I'm sure that's been kind of one of the focuses this week. But just from you know the positives, there were so many of them, but it was a different kind of Leinster performance. They went there, they strangled Exeter, they silenced the crowd. You know, that 44 phase... Yeah, of possession before the you know the match winning try, you know that was huge. So it was a different kind of Leinster performance. They won in a different way than we're norm- normally used to seeing them playing. And as you said at the start there, that's a huge statement of intent. Like wins against Montpellier and Glasgow in the first two rounds, a great start. But you go away to the English champions, a ground like Sandy Park. Uh, they hadn't lost there in 12 months, and you do a job on them like that. Um, and as Johnny said, do a job on them. What they do to every other team that goes there. Um, hugely, impre- hugely impressive, and just the, the depth they have. You know, obviously they've only made one change this week, which is enforced. But you feel that Leo Cullen is now able to really pick his strongest suit, his strongest team at the moment, and that's puts them in such good stead. Like they've just got so many players that they can choose from. You think of James now, not even involved again this weekend. Um, starting, you know, guys like Jordan Armour who can come in. Just they can fit in seamlessly. Um, just they're in really good shape, but as I point out, and as they've done, you know, they're only halfway through. Um, and you know, four years ago, I think it was they they beat Northampton at Franklin's Gardens, put in an unbelievable performance, kind of similar to what they did at Sandy Park last weekend, and they were beaten by Northampton at the Aviva, and that made them go. I think it was too long in the quarter final, yeah. so that changes the whole complexion. So I think they're fully aware of that. But as Johnny said, I think they'll get the job done again tomorrow. Absolutely, we'll uh, get your predictions in a moment, lads. But before we wrap up, Ulster Johnny, I suppose. Look, they got the job done themselves last weekend and it's been a problem for Ulster for the last three, four years, maybe longer, that that word consistency that people mention and it's uh, like even speaking to people like Stephen Ferris, they're unbelievably frustrated that this team can sort of put a sequence of results together. This is an opportunity maybe to kickstart something like that and get two solid wins against a, a decent Premiership side and also keep yourself alive in, in the Champions Cup. Do you reckon they're... Uh, I don't know, well prepared to do that? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, I think last week in the first half, the conditions were just so horrific that they just ground out a performance. They just got their heads in that we're here, we're going to do a job. No matter how bad it is, um, the conditions, we're here to do a job. And I think um, Harlequin's kind of soft underbelly came and shunned through. Um, you know, I think their reaction the previous week when they beat a Saracens team that are probably on their knees to a certain extent um, it was like they'd won, like they'd won the Premiership when they did three or four years ago. So that kind of shows you where their mentality is at. Um, and last week, I just think they kind of had, you know, they, they went for the hills a small bit. So I think if Ulster can get stuck into them early, just get in that doubt, that Quinn's underbelly, that soft undercurrent, that that kind of unfortunately for them has run through over the last two or three years, they will just, you know, I think they'll head for the gate. So. Um, and hopefully, you know, uh, I, I think that's what, what will happen. Ulster, you know, I've got a huge amount of respect for Les Kiss. I think, you know, my involvement with him when I was in, in around the Irish camp when he was in charge of Tech and Kidney, I think he's an excellent coach. And I think, you know, they need to like that. They've put everything in place off the pitch. Uh, the stuff, it all has to, it all has to start, start coming out on the pitch and they need results like that. I think La Rochelle are probably going to go ahead and win this game, but it's going to come down to the you know Ulster win over the weekend, and then you know they're going to have to go to Wasps. They do a job on Wasps, and I think they'll probably get out as as um, um, you know maybe a runner up. So um, I think this is this is a stepping stone, and you know they get a try early, you know it should, could be a five pointer for them, which would really put them in a in a good spot for that second place. Absolutely, uh, we'll have to see what happens with Ulster over the weekend. You would fancy the fancy them to get the job done as Johnny says uh, I will ask you gents for your predictions in a moment we do first have uh, a clip of Keen Healy who spoke to us during the week about facing Exeter again and the task that is so uh, here's Keen they're a bloody good team like they're, they're going to get back into the game and and, uh, and they're going to put you under the pump like it's it's about how we respond to that I suppose and, and try our best to not give them opportunities to make us have to respond if if we can if we can be going after them for the whole game that's ideal but you know it's more than likely they're going to get a bit of a purple patch in a game and and have a couple of pops off you and if we can have 
defence well structured and counter attack well structured to get us back into solid platform or field position, then we know what we've put together off the field is is linking up nicely. Um, I think there's a lot to come. We didn't really have to play any of our players or anything like that. It was it was just a bit of a dogfight and carry up the guts. So um, you know we've a lot of a lot of crafty stuff to take out of the bag. So um, given the opportunity, I'd say the lads will be able to be able to unlock that. There's dangerous sense of security. I think some teams can fall into from beating a team and then. That I suppose that little kick you get when you do get beaten is it's a big thing for the whole week. If you get beaten in the first one it burns pretty hard and you have that opportunity to go after a team. We're well aware that we've been in that position before. And um you know, it was such a close game, it really cuts out any kind of uh confidence to just sit on our performance. Like we've to we've to really look to to improve this week and we're looking after our bodies today and, and doing the mental side of the work and, and tomorrow we'll, we'll get pretty physical and training, I'd imagine. So Leinster have a little bit more in the tank, reckons Keen Healy, echoing a lot of your own sentiments there, Johnny. Uh, we might get a couple of predictions from you. Let's start with that Leinster game. Uh, you reckon they'll get the job done, but it might be a little bit closer, a little bit tougher than it was at, uh, at Exeter last weekend. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be pretty close for uh, you know seventy minutes. And I think they'll probably just pull away towards the end. But I think it'll probably be something around maybe an eight, eight, nine point game. But I think a much, much improved performance um, from um, from Exeter. And uh, I think it's probably, I think it's going to be the game of the weekend. What about uh, Monster then against, uh, well, two of your former employers, I suppose, at Welford Road? How do you reckon that one's going to go this, this weekend? Uh, oh, it's going to be very tight. Uh, I, I think, you know, Tamua and Manu in the centres just give them a different element. And also, you know, people will probably be looking at, you know, Mike Williams' in cl- inclusion at seven. He wasn't playing last week. You know, he's an out and out seven. Kiwi guy that probably should have had a bit of recognition, more recognition back home. But I think um, I'm going to sit on the fence in this one and hopefully go for a 44 all oh, draw. <laughs> You're killing us. <laughs> uh, and Ulster, you reckon Ulster will get the job done right at home? Yeah, look, I, I think that that will hopefully be, a, be be an easy weekend uh, for them. Start start well, uh, get a, get a try early, and then you know I just think. Look, Queens, they've been great, great side over the last couple of years. I just think they're a shadow of their former self since Conor O'Shea left. And I think they're old. they are going back to their old habits. I think there's a bit of a soft underbelly amongst that team. So I think they're going to uh, struggle a small bit. Ryan, the tiebreaker, 44 all draw, Welford Road, or how do you see it going? Uh, yeah, it's going to be very, very tight. I think, like, obviously uh, don't Le- you start. <laughs> <as well. laughs> no, no Lester, it will be tight. Le- tight. Leicester are going to obviously come back. They're going to come back extremely hard. They're hurting. We know they're hurting. There. There's a bit of vengeance in the air there, um, and it's a huge, huge game for them. You know, it's must win. They're going to have. They, they have to win it to keep their campaign alive. Um, Munster have spoken actually. Billy Holland just quickly. Billy Holland and Conor Murray both separately have spoken about. It. Obviously, in the context of the group, it's or the pool. It's a huge game for both teams. But for Munster's season, they've both spoken about this game as being huge because it's seen as this. You know, last season they put a few decent performances. You know, one-off performances under Rossi together um, as they got to the semi-finals. But this year they want to kind of build on that and show that they've developed and progressed. Um, and if they can go to Welford Road, I think Leicester have only won tw- uh, lost twice at home at Welford Road in the last 36 European games. So you can go there and you can back up last week's performance with another one that puts them in a great position in the pool, in the absolute driving seat. Uh, I'm going to go for Munster Ooh. by three points tomorrow or on Sunday. Well, I'll take that. Johnny, thanks a million for joining us. Best of luck with, uh, I suppose, getting a bit of sleep over the next 12 or 13 years. <laughs> but uh, we're delighted for you anyway. Congratulations. Thanks a million. Cheers. Best of luck with the hangover, lads. Get some potassium, get a couple of bananas into you there throughout the day, hopefully. It's, it listen, better. it's going to be a battle. Yeah, every moment's a battle in here, <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll persevere. Cheers. <laughs> nice one, Ryan. Cheers. We'll Good chat and to all of you at home as well, cheers for watching. Enjoy the rugby over the weekend. We will be back this time next week. And until then... Take care. And thanks to Airsport as well. I forgot that. That's the hangover. Thank you very much, Airsport. But uh, yeah, cheers. Enjoy it. And uh, we'll chat to you next week.